worked, mission successful, over and out. We here at NASA headquarters are very happy to announce that Mission Eagle 6 was a full success. Our crew was able to extract the specimen lost by the Italians on the moon and bring it back to Earth. And so let's have a briefing where we show you what actually this interesting device can do. Hey, this is Fiend to Space. I'm Sasha from Switzerland. So good to meet you and thanks for watching my channel. Okay, the Eagle 6 is out. And as always, Filippo made a Hollywood-like movie about it. If you haven't watched it, link is in the description below. But here, we're continuing now and dig a little bit deeper and really look at what does differ from the Eagle 6 to the Eagle 5. But before we start, just a small disclaimer. Filippo did contact me about a week ago and ask me if I would be interested in reviewing the Eagle 6 as I'm already a long time owner of the Eagle 5. And so he sent me this demo model. But obviously, I have to send this back. <laughs> but still, holding in my hand the Eagle with the serial number 0003 is quite amazing. So as a lot of you reacted very positively in one of my last videos when I did not do an unboxing, I will also not do an unboxing now. It's already unboxed and we will divide this video in two parts. In the first part we really look at the hardware and we compare it to the Eagle 5 and in the second part we go to my computer and I will show you the exact specs of the new Eagles and demonstrate you right away the new functionalities. But if you don't know what an Eagle is, it is first of all an absolutely amazing astrophotography mini computer mostly aimed at experienced astrophotographers and especially at astrophotographers who have an observatory or who shoot remote so that they can control their rig from far away. And that's also where the advantages of the Eagle 6 really are compared to the Eagle 5. And we'll discuss that. On an Eagle runs Windows. So you can actually install Nina there and all the other software that you would have on your remote computer running the rig. But you can also install PixInsight on it. It's a full PC, but it's so much more. Even if you go with the Eagle 5, it has the eye, which actually looks if there's clouds at the sky, how bright the sky is. It has an inclinometer, it has GPS, it has a lot of power and USB ports, so you can connect everything you need through it. So it's a full powerhouse. And given it's for observatories, it's built extremely reliable and like a tank. This is metal. This is no toy, to be very clear. And also to be very clear, this is an open system. This is not like just for Prima Lucha lab equipment. You can connect whatever you want to that. It's a PC. So let's look now what changed from the Eagle 5, which was already amazing, to the Eagle 6. And at first, it looks almost the same. It's exactly the same housing. It's the same antennas. It's the same energy ports. We really have to look at the detail. So when we look at this side, we see that the four USB ports which are here, they're now stacked on top. And beside that is, as it appears, an Ethernet port. But that's not really an Ethernet port. It's a lights out management port. And what you can do is you can connect an Ethernet cable from here to your PC or to your home network. And then you can control the Eagle through it through a browser. And we will see that live on the computer afterwards. And the cool part is you can control the Eagle even if it's shut down, even if it's crashed. It doesn't matter. You can always access the Eagle through that. You can turn it on. You can turn the different energy ports on. You can switch the USB ports on and off. All that right from your computer without having to go through a remote desktop, without relying on Windows. 
And that's the biggest change this year. And especially for observatory owners, that's a game changer. Now, when we move it to the other side, you see that here about everything looks the same, but we have two new ports here, control out and control in. And these are the observatory action ports. So you can send a signal, a pulse to a mount, to a dome, and you can also receive signals from certain equipment. And you can even tinker around with it yourself. We will talk more about that when we are on the PC. So from the outside, these are the two big changes. Beside that, there are two other changes which you cannot see. One is that the inclinometer is more precise and more stable. And the other thing is that the GPS signal is less sensitive to electronic interferences. You might have realized this, especially if you used inferior USB cables, that sometimes it simply did not show the GPS signal. This was because of the electronic interferences of these cables. And it's much more stable now. With that, let's go now to my computer and have a look. Okay, welcome to my computer. So before we actually look at the system live, just here is specs. So what do we see here for changes? We definitely see that from a processor point of view in each of the categories, they switched to the newest one. Interesting is actually on both sides here, the Intel Celeron processor, which is quite more powerful than the old Eagle 5. And is now actually a quite capable option to consider. And on the other side, with the Eagle 6 XTM, they switch now from an AMD processor to Intel i7. Otherwise, with the memory, with the SSD disks, we're about at the same level as before. We see on the Wi-Fi side that they switch to the newest Wi-Fi 6E through the band. But for me, the real interesting part is that previously with the Eagle 5, the lowest model, the Eagle 5, lacked certain functionalities. Now they changed that. The Eagle 6 has exactly the same functionality, except here that it does not have a Thunderbolt port. But who cares? But that fact actually makes the Eagle 6 an extremely attractive candidate, especially because they even price it a little bit lower than the Eagle 5, and it should start at approximately 1,200 US dollars. That's obviously still a lot of money, but for all the functionality that you get here, it's justifiable. But what we now really want to look at is the lights out management and the observatory actions. So let's now jump live into the Eagle 6 dashboard, the Eagle Manager X. I do that by Microsoft Remote Desktop by using actually the Wi-Fi network that the Eagle provides. So what do we see here that is new compared to the Eagle 5? And that's actually these two ports here, control out, control in. So if I right click control in, then you can see that I can change the mode. So I can say, if I get a signal on this port, then actually I want to switch the Eagle on, I want to switch it off, I want to switch it on or off, depending what is not applicable at the moment, or I want to do what is actually programmed at the moment at this power button here. But even more interesting is here, enable ports and disable ports. And let's just think for a moment the possibilities that we have here. That means I can steer one of the power ports here. So what could you do with that? For example, you could actually power a light so that if out of whatever reason you need light in a room to actually, for example, look with a camera, if everything is okay, you could switch this light on or off with the signal. You could even use it to bring energy to a dome to close it. You could also bring energy to a roof to close it. You could, for example, use a mini controller like an Arduino, connect it to a weather station, and as soon as the weather station detects rain, it will, through the Arduino, send a signal to the eagle and stay close down the roof. 
the options that you have here are practically limitless. And the same goes with the control out. If you right click it, I could change here the mode from switch to pulls. I can exactly say how many pulses I want to give, how many milliseconds a pulse should be. And so with that, obviously, I can access all the domes, the mounts and so on, which support the system. But again, I could send a pulse to an Arduino and trigger the Arduino to do something. But now let's look at the lights out management. And actually here in advanced settings, you find this IP address. So you have to align it with the IP format you use within your home network. And then you connect the Eagle through the light out management ethernet port to your local network. And what you can do, and this is so cool, you can actually enter here this IP address in the browser. It has to be a Chrome browser or Firefox, also on a Mac, out of whatever reason Safari seems not to work. And now you automatically get into this mask. And the cool part is you also get into this mask if the eagle is turned off. So let's say outside of your house you have an observatory with a rig and an eagle. Then in the beginning of the night, without even stepping a foot in your observatory, you simply turn on the eagle. And once the eagle is on, then you can right out of this mask say, okay, so I want to turn on the mount. I want to turn on the camera and so on. So you have the full control over your whole system right from this mask. If anything malfunctions, you can just switch off and on a USB port to kind of restart this connection. You can turn the dark mode on and off, which turns all the LEDs off. You can check the inclinometer and also the GPS data. And also down here, you see if everything Yes, okay. And the cool part is you can do that whatever happens to your Eagle. Even if Windows crashes, you can always go in here, you can switch the Eagle off, you can switch it on, Windows restarts and everything works again. So I think this is really an amazing new feature that Primalucia Lab has actually invented for the Eagle. Okay, now we know everything new about the Eagle 6. So the question is, should you buy it? What we really see is that these new features, they're really aimed at people who access a rig remotely, be it through a home observatory or just wanting the comfort of doing everything with your rig from the warmth of your room. So if you own an observatory, I personally think this is a reason, especially the lights out management, is a reason to switch to the Eagle 6. For any other Eagle 5 owner, I don't think it makes a big difference. If you're new and you don't have an Eagle, especially the new entry-level Eagle, the Eagle 6 without the Pro or the S or whatever, I think is an amazing offer. Now for 1,200 US dollars, you get the full package with an enough good processor with all the features like all the other Eagles too. So if you were on the fence buying an Eagle, this might be now the right moment to make the catch. But I also want to state very clear, this is not a beginner's device. This is not a must. But if you're serious about astrophotography, if you want the best, if you need something that's absolutely reliable, if you need something that offers all these features, then there is nothing comparable at the market right now. And the price, from a quality point of view, from a feature point of view, is fully justified. So, I hope this was helpful. See you next time, and clear skies.